Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the indicator lock C3FS. This is a privacy set. Uh, this is a uh, specialized type of privacy set in the sense that it has an indicator uh, function in the rows of the lock. Obviously, it's given away in the image on the front of the box. Uh, indicator locks have become uh, more popular, far more popular uh, recently. It's now 2020, uh, 2019, 2018. You're seeing a uh, complete availability from manufacturers in terms of at least mortise locks and uh, occupancy indicators. It's not uncommon, of course, to have occupancy indicators now even on both sides of the door, where, you know, the only time we would really bump into an indicator lock of course is on a you know bathroom door in an airplane but then you would occasionally see them in uh, changing rooms and department stores well now they're seeming to go just everywhere um, you know we recently did a project for a dentist's office and the client wanted indicator locks on both sides of the door and the manufacturer can absolutely accommodate that <clears throat> forgive me there is uh, a need to be able to, to indicate visually to people. Uh, it is in the opinion of some people as well that it simply enhances standard operation. Uh, you know, going up and uh, hitting a lever is one thing uh, and to know that the door is, uh, the room is occupied, uh, but some people say they want to be able to give a visual indication as well. And then in addition, on the inside as well, to let your client know, hey, you've got the door locked, or hey, you don't. Uh, you know, that sort of thing. So, in this video, we're going to go over uh, this lock. First of all, before we take it out of the box, this indicator lock is available in different finishes, and I'm going to pull them up here on my screen. Um, okay. So, you're going to be able to do these indicator locks in... Okay, so oil rub bronze, that would be a C3FA. A C3FB would be satin brass. A C3FL is uh, 2060 satin chrome. Okay, so I see what's happening here. They have um, The they have a different uh, indicator on the satin chrome, so you can do a C3FL uh, indicator lock C3FL. That's going to give you a satin chrome model with a open or closed lock image. You can do this, the do the C3FS that we're doing here in satin chrome, which will give you in use or vacant. So you have an option there. The C3FP is in polished chrome. So the only one that is open or closed lock image uh, would be satin chrome. So in satin chrome you have two options. Uh, in use or vacant or open and closed lock image. I imagine that's a padlock. We'll take a closer look at that in a moment. Uh, so there's different finishes and those two different options. Uh, this by all appearances seems to be just a imported probably grade 2 lever privacy set. If it's graded this is my first video of an indicator lock from the manufacturer. Having sold them often, I finally have one that is passing my desk so that I can capture a video of it. So let's just get straight to it in terms of determining exactly what this unit is. Okay. Um, certainly would pass a satin chrome. It's um, It's got an unusual... It's not. It's not a true satin chrome. That's for sure. It looks, depending on how the lights hit it, light hits it, it looks more satin nickel or stainless. And even if the light hits it strange, it'll start to look uh, antique nickel as well. But it, it is absolutely just simply stated. It is a. Um, you know, it is just it's, it's silver type color. So you get the concept here. There's a thumb turn. This is simply a privacy set. And what's going to happen is when I turn that privacy button on the inside, I'm obviously throwing the indicator lock. It's that simple. You can see that you have an emergency uh, release on the outside. Any sort of flat bladed tool, like a, like I would say a number 
possibly a number three fl uh, slotted screwdriver is certainly going to work. That operation is also going to uh -huh, uh, make rigid, in fact, both sides of the door. Um, that I have to admit I'm not a fan of, that it's rendering the inside lever locked uh, as well. That, uh, that I wouldn't expect to see. Uh, obviously, reversing the unit is going to be accomplished. Uh, you're going to literally have to remove the levers, and we're going to get into doing that as well. To see what that uh, entails to reverse the lock. But that's what it is. Okay, Vacant, in use. You know, not installed on the door works reasonably well. Okay. Typical sort of handicap generic lever design, straight lever that returns, it ought to return within a half of an inch of the face of the door to be handicap compliant. Uh, I don't believe that this does. Um, or maybe my data on half of an inch return is now out of date, but I sure don't think it is. Levers need to return to within a half of an inch of the face of the door to be considered handicap compliant. This is not doing so. Just in the, you know, in the, in the sake of for the for the sake of you know uh, transparency in, in the information uh, of of that okay so obviously they're going to need to rotate this lever around this is going to be able to be just turned around uh, is going to be my guess on that okay this is not going to be able to be just turned over that lever is going to have to get flipped around um, and it's possible that we'll have to rotate or reverse both sides. Okay, let's take some dimensional properties and we're going to look at the included um, template information, things of that nature. First, the diameter of the rows. It's about three and an eighth. Okay, the, and just because the inside's a little less to deal with. The center of the lever out to the return, edge of the return, looks like it's about five inch. <clears throat> Again, does not <clears throat> it's not even close to being half inch to within the face of the door, <clears throat> so I would be mindful of that. <clears throat> it's not a technicality. It's levers have to return within a, a half of an inch of the face of the door, uh, so be mindful of that. And in addition to that, I don't see anywhere in the manufacturer's uh, published data that this is, you know, on their box. Uh, that this is handicap compliant. So they're not saying that it is. Um, and that's probably, <laughs> certainly why. Um, <clears throat> you know, they could, I imagine, redesign the lever. <clears throat> Going to have some additional components inside of here as we do our visual tour. This is clearly going to be a an adjustable back set, two and three eighths or two and three quarter. That's going to be accomplished quite simply <clears throat> by pulling the hub of the latch bolt back. Two and three-eighths or two and three-quarter. This is going to be a two and a quarter tall by one inch wide uh, spring latch. <clears throat> okay. Get that latch to return without any trouble. We throw that to in use and it's going to give us that privacy function. So there's obviously something <clears throat> inside of the <clears throat> rose assembly that is causing, uh, that is permitting the function of privacy on this. Uh, can't really say what is inside of there. I, I don't see any evidence of it, but there's clearly a mechanism that's linked there. So the latch bolt is here, two and three eighths or two and three quarter. Be mindful, that's only one inch wide when you're prepping your door, it's only one inch wide. If you needed to fill that space, you could, <clears throat> what I mean to say is if you had a uh, inch and an eighth wide prep, uh, indicator lock does not have anything that I'm familiar with. Um, Schlage, however, makes a plastic adapter and I'm going to pull that part number up uh, just because every once in a while you really, really need to have that plastic adapter. Yeah. 
Let's take a look. Let me let me search for that. So it took a moment to look that up, and that part number is A-501-878. And basically what that is is a, a plastic slip-over filler that will slide over the edge of the latch bolt, allowing you to install this into a prep that's inch and an eighth wide. So if you had a, a door prep inch and an eighth wide, you're going to want that adapter. You don't have to use it, but this uh, one inch wide plate will not fill completely the edge prep of an inch and an eighth wide. Uh, and if it was at two and three quarter back set, that would be called a 161 prep. So that little, just little fun fact there, I suppose. So they're giving us also a full lip strike. We also call these D strikes. You can see why we would call it a D strike. Overall height of a D strike or full lip is two and a quarter. This one has an overall width of about an inch and three quarter. However, strikes are really measured from the center line of the hole to the edge of the lip, which comes in at about an inch and three sixteenths, I would say. That's very typical and common. Inch and three sixteenths, inch and a quarter. That's going to account for most uh, applications. If you had an unusually thick casing, or if you had a deep inset of the door inside of the frame, in the frame, where that inset is not zero or three thirty seconds, let's say it was a half inch or something else. Um, yeah, you're going to probably need to look at uh, an extended lip strike, which we can help you with. Different manufacturer. This is going to include a dust box. It's going to allow you to clean off the look of the installation. It just sit, literally sits behind the, um, the strike. When you mortise the strike into the frame, you're just going to place this behind it. And that keeps the particulate from the wall from entering into the living space. Um, also, gives you a cleaner look you know if you install it without you're going to see whatever whatever is behind there which will be some cut wood most likely or worse a cavity a dusty cavity uh, you're also going to get this tool that will certainly help us reverse uh, the uh, handing of the lock which we're probably going to have to which you will possibly have to do um, and then you're going to get four screws two for the latch two for the strike that's easy and you'll get two more screws, which are going to be for the ins from the inside of the lock to the exterior side of the lock to simply screw it together. So it's a real simple installation in that regard. Um, paperwork that is included with this will be the installation instructions and a template. Let's take a look at all of that now. So the installation instructions, and they're linked to down below here, and we're going to go over them on the camera. We're going to reverse that lock as well. And that's where that little special tool is going to come into play uh, that we're going to end up needing. And I realize I just put it back in the package. Okay, you're also going to get, there is a template that's there. Okay, this is a two and three quarter paper template. And the template that they have uh, on the paperwork is two and three eighths or two and three quarter, even though I don't really see that that is specifically listed there. It does say the door will work on door ranges from inch and three-eighths to two inch, so that's a, uh, a good generous range of door lock for this to uh, actually work on. Um, you know, I don't think you're going to bump into anything outside of that uh, realistically. If, you know, if you've got a two and a quarter inch thick door, yeah, you're leaving the realm of standard locks uh, like this material. Uh, so let's do this. We're, it's time to uh, reverse this lock, and I don't want to just start poking at it uh, to figure out what it is that we need to do. Um, I'm going to look quickly at the installation instructions uh, before I just poke at it. Remove the cover with the key included. All right. I was on step four. Yeah, okay. So basically in step three, they're saying in box C of step three, to reverse the lever, level, lever left hyphen R, L hyphen R, remove the handle with included key and reverse the handle. Okay. So apparently they want you to do it to both sides of the door. Uh, and not just turn over the interior uh, portion. Um, that's probably... We're going to test that. We're going to see what happens. So let's 
actually reverse this lock now on camera. Then we're going to switch to the screen view and take a look at the supporting documentation together. Let's simply demonstrate how to reverse the handing of this. Um, you know, this is going to be uh, simply a case of taking the tool per the installation instructions and depressing that spring-loaded pin that's right there. Doing it so we both can see is always a challenge. Okay, so all I did there was I was using my index and my thumb to push on the escutcheon as I depressed the pin and then surely it popped off. Okay, so I see how this is clearly working. There's a hole on this side and one on this side, which is going to permit the unit to work literally from either side without replacing that spring-loaded pin. So simply reversing it, now what we're dealing with is the pin caught down on this side, depressing that, then pushing my lever down, gets that to snap back in place, and you can see the pin is seated. And now I have an opposite operation, I think. Let's test. I haven't reversed the exterior, the interior yet. Okay. All right, so it certainly works. I'm going to reverse the interior now. Should be the same operation. There is indeed that floating pin or that empty pin that's there. Depress that as I'm pushing. Depress that pin as I'm pushing. I mean, I have it partially depressed, but it takes... Okay, yeah. I mean, sometimes it just takes a lot of force. The, the, the bottom line is there's not a... And I'm going to reverse it now so the pin is on the inside. The bottom line is there's just simply not a tremendous amount of, you know, tolerance when... It, you know, high machining tolerances here when you are... Or very low machine, machining tolerances, I suppose. Uh, when you're manufacturing these imported locks, they're, you know... They need to be pushed and pulled on and popped and coaxed and etc. So I've reversed that and now that pins on the inside. So we went from having a, uh, a right hand lock to now a left hand lock or um, what would also be a, we were this way so it would, be, it would have been a right hand or a left hand reverse, pardon me, a, left, a right hand or a right hand reverse and now we have a left hand or a left hand reverse. And I'm moving my thumb turn on the inside. I want to get that seated. Yeah, okay. So what I'm doing is just simply testing the operation. I want to make sure it works when I put it all back together. And in the interest, of course, of doing that, let's actually place the latch bolt in the lock body. I've got it set at two and three quarter. That's not going to matter. I did change it, though, so that's... Um, you know, our occupancy still works. We are retracting the lever, okay? When I'm in the locked position, I cannot retract either side, okay? I gotta tell you, um, with this lock, in my opinion, they should definitely be selling this with an occupancy indicator on the inside as well. I'm gonna see that and I'm gonna say, I can't get out, what do I do? Um, I would prefer that there be an option for an in interior uh, operator. Um, I can't see that as being an impossibility to achieve. I mean, that spindle is... Anyway, I don't know anything about the manufacturing process, but um, I say that because we sell occupancy indicators on the inside of doors as well so the clients can know what state they've left the door in. So at this point, we're going to switch to the... Um, screen view where we can take a look at the extended uh, description, the supporting documentation uh, of this lock. 
And here is the item that we are looking at. Indicator lock, C3FS, commercial lock with in-use or vacant indicator in 2060 satin chrome. So let's first take a look at the other options here. We're going to search for indicator lock C3, and then you'll be able to find all of the other uh, finishes. And then the two options in terms of the S, in-use or vacant. Then the other C3FS was actually a C3FL which would be the open or closed lock image. There is a PVD finish here, which is a lifetime brass. That has been discontinued um, in early 2020, and is in, this will be uh, removed by the time you're seeing this video from the site. Uh, so back to the item that we're working on. Now, I do want to uh, indicate that nowhere here they indicate that this is a ADA compliant. They say that it meets the ANSI and BHMA standards uh, uh, according to A1 uh, to, to, to A156.2, but there is no grade rating here, um, and there is no, again, there's no compliance with handicap standards, with ADA compliance. So if I was going to grade this lock, I'd say that it would be grade three at the most, which is a quarter million cycles, but because it's not been tested to any sort of grade, uh, grade there's grade one, grade two, and grade three. Grade three would be a quarter million cycles. Grade two is a half a million, and grade one is one million. Uh, you know, who knows? Maybe the lock would last a million cycles. It's just not been tested. But I can tell you that a construction like this, a tubular construction lock like this, would be at the most grade three. Grade three at the most. Um, commercial privacy lever so it's a privacy it's meant to be on a bathroom satin chrome and the other finishes that we had talked about earlier reversible we had uh, demonstrated earlier how to reverse the handing of the unit large occupancy indicator sure that would be that would definitely be the case handle is fabricated from zinc alloy and the fact that it's made of zinc is going to make the handle both heavy and give it a reasonably faithful finish and while you know, I would stop short of calling it 2060 satin chrome, um, but it is certainly complementary to that type of finish. Stainless steel escutcheon, and that's why it's not going to look 2060 because it's made of stainless. It'll look more like 630 finish or US 32D. Turning knob inside for locking and unlocking, emergency hole outside, emergency release uh, provision, I would say. Full length lever handle with 3 8 return. Um, yeah, I don't, uh, nothing on here is 3 8 return. <coughs> the return back is not 3 8 It's not returning back to within 3 8 of the face of the door. It might be returning back to within 3 8 of the face of the rosette. That's not how, um, that's not how it's defined. Ships with mounting hardware, see image below, sure, right there. That door thickness range, now they're saying 1 and 3 16 to 2 inch. Um, I have the lock together on my desk, and I can tell you that uh, I wouldn't say that it's 1 and 3 16, but uh, 1 and 5 16 would be more accurate. Adjustable 2 and 3 8 to 2 and 3 quarter, we demonstrated that. The cut sheet is here and the installation instructions. Let's just uh, tackle the tackle the cut sheet first. So as I'm looking at this, it is not clear to me how this is handicap compliant. Unless, unless the code is changed where you don't have to return back to within a half of an inch of the face of the door, um, then I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with it not being handicap compliant. They listed here as ANSI 3. I don't know. Well, they list it right here, grade 3. Okay. So there's some information coming up on the cut sheet that's not in the generic description. Basic dimensional properties are here, and they do indicate ANSI grade 3 and ADA compliant. So um, 
the way to confirm that is to refer back to the handicap, uh, the ADA Accessibility Design Guide or A117 uh, document, but half inch to the face of the door is, is how I understand it to be. The and that's the cut sheet, something you can use to forward to someone. Now the installation instructions, which is what we were driving at all along. So we won't be getting into a detailed discussion on how to prep the door, but assuming that your door is already prepped, you'll set your latch bolt to two and three eighths or two and three quarter, and then you're going to install it first. If it's going into into a wood door, be sure to uh, pre-drill those holes. Um, you don't want to split the edge of the jam, uh, pardon me, the edge of the, the style of the door. Install your strike plate using the same logic. Prep it. Uh, use that dust box. Oh, um, another thing that they don't list here is that it's not fire rated or UL listed. So be mindful, this would not be appropriate for use on a fire door. Um, you know, I don't, you know, not to speak less of the lock and it's probably not going to be used on a fire door uh, that's certainly uh, you're not going to see that in a commercial application really where the bathroom doors are fire rated um, but it's not UL listed so we wouldn't use it on a fire door uh, get the dust box installed if at all possible okay install exterior mechanism basically once the latch is installed you're just going to slide the spindle the well you don't see it here but the what is ultimately the spindle which is here down through the hub of the latch bolt and the two mounting posts for the screws they're going to go um yeah they're going to go there are four possible holes this hole and this hole would be two and three eighths. You'll use this hole or this hole and here if it's two and three quarters where you will push those those threaded posts down through to get the lock installed. At that point you're just simply going to bring the interior side and get that um, spindle down seated into the turn knob and the turn knob must be rotated so that the trim can seat all the way onto the face of the door. Uh, at that point, I would loosely install the screws, meaning I would install the screws, I just wouldn't permanently tighten them, and I would test operation. I would make sure that my thumb turn worked on the inside. I would make sure that it locked both sides of the door. I would retract it back to unlocked and make sure it worked. I would demonstrate the um, ability of the exterior emergency release to work. And when I was done, I would I would finally tighten the screws on this. I might be tempted to use some thread lock uh, on the tips of these mounting screws because they don't have any. Uh, and the other you know the other issue that you're dealing with here is you have a lock that's intended for a two and an eighth inch hole, not a modified two and an eighth inch hole. There is no provision for the lever through bolts. What I'm driving at, the, the, the posts for the through bolts go through the two and an eighth inch. They are not drilled up here or over here. So putting some thread lock on those screws would be a good idea and using it in a reasonably um, adult situation where there's not going to be excessive rotational force turned because you'll get the entire chassis to rotate as you run that lever down and you're going to uh, put undue strain on the latch bolt in the... Um, you know, uh, you're gonna make you're gonna make this entire uh, latch bolt move in ways that it's not meant to move in because of that lever rotational force that you're putting on it. So be mindful. This is absolutely grade three, um, according to them. Uh, the the template is here. Uh, there is a separate template here that shows two and three quarter only, but the whole the vertical line nearest the edge of the door is two and three eighths. The one furthest away is two and three quarter. A lot of tolerance with this lock. You know, you could be very slightly off, and I don't think it's going to matter too much. Uh, but obviously, you want to drill your holes in the correct location. Now, back to the item that we are working on here. The link to the manufacturer's page is here. That's going to allow us to review not only all of the indicator lock products that we sell, 
but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. And I don't believe that they have quite too many parts actually listed in the book. But nonetheless, they do have a, a small smattering of material. And I believe that they are working on a keyed version of this as well. And if they do, we'll have that added to the site. Let's wrap up this video on camera. And again, it seems like a reasonable lock. Uh, quite frankly, this sort of design and construction would be considered residential in nature. So I would be very much cognizant of where I was installing this type of lock. I have, you know, um, I've recently done a job where, a, a, according to the distributor, the architect specified a grade one imported lock. Um, in a college campus, on a college campus. And even though the lock is rated at grade one, I, I don't know that I could also make the argument that just because it's rated grade one, you should use it, use certain locks in applications where you know that the volume of use and the type of use is going to be extreme. The downside of certain locks like this that are imported from overseas uh, is that All right? Got to okay. Make sure our templates were back in the box. Uh, is that you're not going to have access to technical support from the people who engineered the lock, or a parts drawing, or available parts? Um, you know, if you're going to put this on a busy um, fast food restaurant, I'd order a couple of them so that you had one on hand. Uh, to replace it when it broke or, or no longer functioned. You know, there's no lever through bolt holes to keep that lever from really torquing the latch bolt. That's going to be a problem. Um, and it's and it's grade three. Um, you know, that is, that's what residential locks are intended for. If you're using it, my, um, this is, <laughs> this is going to all places to the, to a branch of uh, one of the four branches of the military. Um, so I'll be interested to know how that works in a heavy commercial application. But I uh, have another one for a friend of mine who is building a salon and his single bathroom door, he wants to have an occupancy indicator on it. And we're going to try it there. It'll be low volume use, obviously. Relatively, it'll be low volume for commercial use. And I expect it to be okay. I'm not a fan of that turn button on the inside being less than obvious. Uh, in order to what it takes to exit. Uh, so that might be a problem long term because the salon is going to cater to young and old and everybody uh, has a different level of uh, familiarity with how locks work. If I were to see a lock like that and it was locked, I would know what to do to exit. I happen to have spent the last 30 years selling door hardware and you know studying it. Um, so I would say that I'm not the average user. Um, not fire rated, um, don't see how it's ADA compliant. I do admit that there's a likelihood that I'm incorrect on that. They wouldn't publish that without it having been uh, confirmed as such. Um, but every time you look at lock manufacturers' catalogs, they want to return to within half of an inch of the face of the door. However, um, I can think of lots of different lever designs that don't observe that, that you know are listed as handicap compliant from major domestic manufacturers. So that may no longer be uh, a requirement of this, okay? And that area is ever evolving as well. But it does seem like a decent lock. Use it where it's appropriate to use this type of lock, and I wish you luck with it. Any questions on the indicator lock C3FS, commercial lock with in-use or vacant indicator in a 2060 satin chrome finish, or any other uh, indicator lock product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.